Okay, so those of you who are ready to animate, we can do a little bit of that right now. I'm just going to show you the basics of keyframing this animation here. And you can keyframe things depending on what you have selected. For example, I can take this light and select it. And I'm going to go over here to my animation. And you can see I'm at zero seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a keyframe for the location of that light. And then I'm going to go forward to 60 frames, which is two seconds. And I'm going to move the light to the other side of the rocket and see what happens. Once again, I have to insert a keyframe for the location. And then as I move and scrub back and forth on my timeline here, you can see the light moving. Now, if I change my view to the camera, then when I do this, I can actually see the light moving, but the rocket is not. But that is going to uh, play for me. There's the play button here, and you can kind of see the speed with which that is going to happen. Now, it's not actually changing the lighting or anything because we're not rendering it out. We can stop it at any point to see what would it look like. Hit F12. There's the light over there. Hit escape, bring the light up to the beginning and get a view of it. And the light's on this side. So we'll move the light and now let's move the rocket. So let me move a little bit over here and I'm going to right click on the rocket. Notice that only one part of it has been selected. This is where things get a little strange. And if I move it up, you can see, oh, there was a piece down there that was not actually attached. Where you see the pieces of your rocket is usually over here. You can see that there's a camera in our scene, a lamp that we moved, the plane that we added that we can turn on and off with the eyeball, and then there's the SketchUp. But the eyeball doesn't seem to work right for all of that. But you can see under SketchUp, we've got these different groups. Let me try turning off those groups. And now we have the fins there. So still figuring out exactly how all the pieces work together when we're talking about the SketchUp um, import. But now everything's put back together again. So I'm going to keyframe its position. So once that light moves, let's say it gets to its spot over there. We're gonna, well, let's say in through at the 30 second mark, I am going to insert a keyframe for the location of the rocket and insert a keyframe for the rotation of the rocket. Now I'm going to go forward to about the three second mark and I'm going to both move the rocket up and I want to rotate it. Now let me show you where that can be done most easily. Over here where the cube is, we get to see the actual transform location of our item. And that is the rocket in this case. And you can see that the Z, let me open this up a little bit more, the Z number has changed from zero. We've moved it up. Watch what happens as I move it. So you can be very precise. If you want it to move up exactly five blender units, then it can do that. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to Let's see, did I insert a keyframe back there? I may not have. Let's see what happens when I move. Yep, it didn't insert a keyframe. So let me go back. Let me hit F12 here and see. Oh, it's up just a little bit. I wonder if I move that back down to zero and do another render. I don't know. It's a little confusing. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's see right there. We've set a keyframe for its location and rotation. So let's go down to the three second mark. I'm going to escape out of the render. And I'm going to go up. And I'm also going to change the rotation here and spin it around a little bit. Now that means I have to come over here now and insert a location keyframe and a rotation keyframe. And now I can see it animating. 
So the light's going to move, and then it moves up and out of the shot. Now, at any point here, I can hit F12 and get a little render and see what that's going to look like. But if we want to make an animation, it's a whole other story. Let's go ahead and show you how to do that. So let's say we've got three seconds of video. When we go over here to the render, we're going to tell it right here that we're only going to render 90 frames. We don't want all those extra frames of nothing happening. A few other things to look at. This is the resolution of the images, but it's set to 50%. So you can very quickly do a low resolution quick version or move it all the way up for the final high def. We're going to do these at 50%. Now 24 frames per second is the default. I tend to like to work with 2997. That's what Premiere is most used to look, looking at. So let's do one more thing, and that's change where all these images are going to go. So I've defaulted here to the temp drive, but I'm going to go over to the D drive to my period, and you'll see that I've got a folder called Rocket Renders. So this is what I suggest you do, is make a special folder just for making these kinds of renders. So 150114, this is going to be my tutorial test, tutorial test. So in this folder, accept that folder, that's where the images will now go. And when I hit F, uh, F12, it's still just going to give me a single image. But now I can click over here on render the animation once I escape. So let's take a look at the rendering. Hmm. I don't see it. How do I render my animation? Right here. Animation. So it's going to go through and render out these images. It's going to look a little funny because it's going to render mostly the stuff that it thinks is going to change, such as, as you can see here, the shadows and this area here and leave the transparency pretty much alone. Now, while it's doing that, I'm going to go and look in that folder and watch those being created. So I'm going to go to my D drive, 8th period folder, Rocket Renders Tutorial Test. And there they are, one by one by one being created. And we will then bring these into Premiere after setting our default image to one frame, instead of five seconds, you don't want each one of these to last five seconds, five seconds would be five times 30, 150 of these frames would be necessary to make five seconds of video. It's kind of fun at this point to just do a preview, and you can use your right arrow, and you can see that it's rotating, oh, the light is moving, and then it takes off and starts rotating. You'll only be able to see the ones that had been done at the time. So as you can see, we are still going along to get to 90. But any one of these images can be previewed, and you can check out just what it's going to look like. So the shadow is now gone because the rocket has lifted up high enough. So the next tutorial uh, will probably be how to string these together in Premiere and make an actual video out of them.